welcome back everyone it's been a while since i've released a review and we're gonna kick it off right now with aew dynamite which aired december 23rd a day before christmas eve 2020 and it was a decent episode for a holiday edition it was the holiday edition of dynamite the holiday bash i believe it was called and the next few weeks of dynamite should be even better than this we're gonna start kicking off the road to revolution which should be good entertainment for all we kicked off the night with jericho and mjf versus top flight and this was a barn burner of a match it definitely put over top flight it showed what they could do and that they can hang with the likes of jericho and mjf mjf slaps darius to start then chops him to death top flight then manages to isolate jericho with their precision later all are in the ring in a stalemate eventually mjf and jericho wins via mjf's heat seeker match put over top flight nicely while moving along the mjf and jericho storyline dynamite pretty much bookended their show with new fresh talent so that's good on them they are trying to build new stars despite what the naysayers think post-match jake hager grabs a mic and he says congrats it's been two weeks hager puts down wardlow for not showing up due to his family business and as a result a match is made for next week which is Jake Hager versus Wardlow. These two have had stare down contests in just about every segment, the inner circle and then MJF had even this even comes down to the pictures they've taken. Hager and Wardlow have always been staring each other down. And that's some long-term storytelling. Next up, we had a segment with Sting interviewed by Tony Schiavone. Sting says he was part of building the original jungle. Now he gets to be a part of the new thriving jungle. Tony says, why is he here? And Sting says, yeah, he has to go back in time. And as a result, he drops an impression of Dusty Rhodes. Most people thought it was a spot on impression. Not long after this, Taz interrupts just as Sting was about to address the Darby situation and as a result a match is made two weeks from now and it is Brian Cage going up against Darby Allen for the TNT championship which I think Darby will retain somehow following this we had a segment with MJF and it was him consoling Santana regarding his loss in his family that he occurred that happened to him over the past few weeks and it showed mjf at his most vulnerable he was showing compassion to santana especially after the two were at odds a little bit well he was at odds with ortiz santana really didn't mind mjf joining the group but mjf says he knows santana lost someone recently and from the bottom of his heart, he wants to say he knows how hard it is and he's there for Santana. Great little segment. This furthers along the fact that many of us think MJF is planting the seeds of him tossing out Jericho and Sammy Guevara eventually from the inner circle as he takes over as the leader of the group. Just trying to butter up Santana and Ortiz to get them more on his side. Following this, we had a matchup between the Dark Order and the Jurassic Express. Marco starts the match with Colt Cabana. Marco gets some offense in and eventually tags in Jungle Boy and Cabana. And Cabana does the same thing with five. Later, 10 isolates Jungle Boy through the picture in picture break. And back from break later, the Jurassic Express win with a double team power bomb like maneuver. I'm not sure what they call it, but it looks good. It looks great. Post-match, Tony interviews the Jurassic Express. 
Marco says it's good to be back on Dynamite, and then FTR interrupts, and they pretty much further their feud with the Jurassic Express by cutting them down, etc. After this, we had a segment with Don Callis and the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega. Marvez mysteriously tracks him down, and Don Callis calls out Marvez on this. Because Marvez seems to be always in position for these interviews. And it just comes, it's very, it's so much of a coincidence, which it isn't. And he calls him out by being a creeper, which I thought was hilarious. Don Kyle says, why does Tony Khan let wrestlers run amok in the company? And Don Callis and Kenny refuse to be dictated to. Following this, we had a match between the Butcher versus Pack. Butcher pretty much beats down Pack for most of the match through the break. It's not often we see Pack on the defensive. And back from the break, Pack starts to get some momentum. He later hits his black arrow for the first time since he made his return for the win. Also, this match highlighted just how good the butcher can be because I think this is the best he's looked since the, mo the match he had with Moxley. He seemed to be more in shape this time around. Next up, we had a segment with Kip Sabian and Miro to announce the wedding to Penelope Ford. And after all these months, we finally get a date. Kip says it's the first ever wedding on TNT, which many have debunked. It is not the first. It's not a huge deal for any of them, but it's not just a huge deal for them, but it's a deal for us at home. Just as Kip announces the wedding date, the best friends music plays and it was all they're doing. They duped us. And it was announced that the date would be February 3rd at beach break. There will be the wedding. And Tony Khan has mentioned that there will, there would be an event called beach break, but we weren't sure when now we know it's in February. I would think it would have been on the Jericho cruise, but since we're not having that, this is where we're going to be getting beach break, which would probably take the place of bash at the beach which Cody gave back to the WWE in exchange for his name to be used. And I would not be surprised if NXT uses the Bash at the Beach name to counter AEW's Beach Break. It's gonna be a lot of counter programming coming up soon. Following that up, the next match we had Dustin Rhodes versus Evil Uno of the Dark Order. During Dustin's entrance, Uno gets a cheap shot in. And later back from the break, Uno power drives Dustin and gets a two count for it. And later Dustin wins via a running bulldog. The same fate that 10 met on dark a day prior. So both Uno and 10 lost to a bulldog from Dustin. The story continues. This will probably be referred to again on or well, reference to again on BTE this coming Monday. Post match, Uno still tries to recruit Dustin. And after Dustin rejects it, Stu comes in and takes out Rhodes via the nightfall. Big Shotty Lee, Lee Johnson, then comes to the rescue as he takes out the Dark Order with a double drop kick and sends them all reeling to the back. So this maybe lee johnson's big break on dynamite to actually start perhaps winning matches now hopefully because he's been a standout on dark his matches have all been good he can definitely work the guy has earned it let's see if they give it to him next up we had a sean spears interview with tony shivani and what's notable about this interview is that Spears threw away the loaded glove, so he's not going to be using that gimmick anymore. And it seems like he's not with Tully anymore either. 
And Tony Schiavone was kind of a jerk to Spears, saying that maybe he's the problem. And Spears didn't like this, and he just stormed off the set. So maybe this could be the start of Spears doing something else. Maybe Spears goes over to Impact to do something because he said it might be a while before he comes back. So that may be their way of writing him off TV for something. We will will know in due time. Next, we had Hikaru Shida, the women's world champion versus Alex Gracia, who's made several appearances now on Dark and she's been solid in every one. Pre-match, Abaddon attacks just before Sheeta makes her entrance. I like the uh, transition there. After she gets attacked, she immediately re- recomposes herself and just walks through the curtain, through the tunnels, and does her usual entrance and stuff. The match was decent. It was solid. Falcon Arrow and Sheeta wins, all while Abaddon was stalking her. Post-match. A beatdown commenced again as Sheeta clearly isn't taking any more of Abaddon's crap. So this furthers the rivalry between those two and the match will be made on this coming Dynamite, January 30th. January 30th, Hikaru Sheeta will go up against Abaddon for the second time. This time with a story behind so hopefully Abaddon delivers so she can shut her naysayers up because I enjoy her character and it just sickens me that people just put down wrestlers for just silly reasons and I think she can be great if as long as she keeps putting in the work she's new to the business still she's been only been wrestling for about a year or so so uh, she can get she will get better in time and then we had the main event the acclaimed versus the young bucks the world tag team champions and the championships were on the line the bucks eventually hit the bte trigger in the end to retain those titles i did not think that he, that the acclaimed would win but i did know that they would look good in defeat because AEW has a great knack for that No matter if their competitors win or lose, they usually look good while doing either of them. And this was no exception. They claimed to look great in defeat and they will eventually get their time, have their time with the championships, just not right now. So they'll be down the line years away. They still have growing to do and they're still new to the audience. So they will continue to build up what they have right now and that is talent they have talent and they're only going to get better and there you have it there is your aew dynamite review for the december 23rd 2020 edition holiday bash and i will catch you with the next review on elite speak take care